Okay, guys, so um, in this part, we're going to look at the Illustrator template and how to fill in the stats. So we're going to be using Illustrator for obvious reasons. Um, in the zip file, you should find these four files. The one we're going to use right now is called Illustrator template. So I'm going to go ahead and open that. Um, now, there's numerous ways to open Illustrator. You could double click on the on the icon of the, fi of the file and that will boot up um, Illustrator. Uh, you can go to Illustrator beforehand and boot it up, um, or you can drag and drop it on um, Illustrator. Now, I've already opened up Illustrator just to sort of quicken things up, so I'm just going to click on this. Now, this is the kind of basic uh, screen you will see uh, when you load up. It's possible that this uh, dialog box in the middle, it's called the welcome screen, uh, might not be there. Now, I tend to not use this screen. Um, but it depends on how someone has set up the program. So, okay, I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that, and I'm going to click back onto the background, onto the desktop, and I'm going to grab my Illustrator file, and I'm going to drag and drop it onto Illustrator. Now, I'm using CS3. Um, you can be quite more than welcome to use CS4, CS5, CS5.5. Um, obviously, every six months to a year, they bring out a new version. Um, this is a slightly old version, but it's all fairly similar. Okay, so here we go. We've got um, got our Illustrator document up here um, called Illustrator Template. Now, first of all, um, the best thing to do is to save this with a new name. So, um, as there's no confusion uh, with the file. So, I'm going to go File. I'm going to go Save As. And I'm going to call this Illustrator. I'm just going to get rid of the name template and I'm just going to type in Wiley Dog. Now in its place of Wiley Dog you should put your own name there. Um, so whatever it is. Um, if it was for me then I'll put Dan Duran. If it was Ed, he'd put Ed Gill. Um, for, but this, for de this demonstration I'm going to put Wiley Dog. And we want to save it into the same place as the other files. So um, depending on where you've got opened your zip file, I've got my zip file here, which is in my desktop, um, and I'm just going to save that. It's going to open this dialog box. It's going to give me a few different options. I'm just going to leave that completely as is and not touch anything. I'm just going to OK. OK, so now you'll notice that the uh, file at the top here has changed uh, to the relevant name. OK, so we're good to go. So now every time we save, it's going to automatically save it to that document and not overwrite or erase the template which you may well have to get back to. So first up is we need to kind of look at what we're, what we're seeing here. Um, this image is made up of several different layers, so I need to kind of look at my layers. Now, if you notice down this side, there's a whole different bunch of little icons which represent the palettes. So if I just click on one, um, here we go. Oh, not sure what's going on there. Um, uh, some of the, seems to be some glitch in the software here. Let's get rid of that. Let's do that again. There you go. Okay, so I want to go back up um, and find the relevant one I want. So if I'm looking for a palette, now palettes give you lots of options. Um, the palettes you can always find are in window, and then there's all the various different ones. You've got ones for type, uh, ones for transform, you know, navigating, various different sort of colors, swatches, brushes, etc., etc. I'm looking for layers, so I'm going to click on layers. Oh, still glitchy. Okay. Well, let's see if I can actually click on it. No. Okay, hold on. Okay, so I've sorted out that glitch, and hopefully when I click on this button, now it should open the palette of layers. Yeah, brilliant, there you go. So that's what it should look like. Um, now, these palettes can be ripped off. You can tear them off and place them anywhere you want. Um, some are more useful than others. Um, you've got color up here. Um, uh, let's have a look. Uh, this is a stroke, that's quite a useful one. You've got gradient, transparency, all quite useful. Um, various different other bits and pieces. Now, 
with these palettes, um, you can set up a predefined you know uh, set that you always use. So I tend to use um, specific um, sets, and what you can do is you can actually save the way you lay it out or the way you sort of move these palettes and where you put them, so that you you know you're kind of used to the way um, it's laid out, and you do that in the workspace. And there's a few different basic setups, um, which is I would call basic, panel, and type. Um, so types obviously more specifically aimed at um, people doing more typographic work. Now I've got one called Dan's, um, and I'm going to click on that, and that's going to give me the palettes in the, the you know sort of preset that I like. So I've got my layers palette here. I've got my stroke gradient transparency. I've got swatches. I've got color. Um, and I have all my type stuff um, down here. Now it's completely up to you how you arrange it, but like I said, if you're looking for something and you can't find it, then you go up to Window and you'll find it. You've got Type, there's all, all type ones are there, so on and so forth. Okay, right, so getting back to the design, what I'm going to do um, is I'm going to just look, show you these uh, layers. So right now I've got four layers, Background, uh, Image Guide, text, stats, and text name. Um, and they all relate to different parts of this uh, image. So if I'm going to turn them off one at a time, um, name uh, is this one here, which is your name. It's also got a few guides in there. So when I turn that off, you'll notice the guides disappear. You don't need to worry too much about that. Um, stats is obviously that one. Um, image guide. It's just um, it's actually slightly smaller than what the image will be, but it's just a guide visually to show you what it's where the image would be um, when we actually take it through to InDesign. So I've locked this file so you can't um, move it, you can't pick it up, um, and that's just uh, for a safety. So leave that padlock so you don't need to touch that. The background is also um, uh, padlocked as well um, and that's because I don't want you to move move that that um, element either now if I was to open up um, backgrounds I can do that and this shows me within this layer I've got several different items so I've got the oh let's unlock that just so I can show you this one here is the outer white bit of the card and obviously the blue is the blue section um, and I've got a few layers here, or a few options, a few um, elements turned off, um, and that was just I created those um, to help me at the beginning. So I'm going to lock that back up and I close that back up. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to put in the statistics down the side here. So first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to go to um, that stats layer, um, which holds that in. I can turn that on and off to just make sure that that's sort of correct. Now, we're going to more use more more about the tools as we go on, but right now we're going to use just this first tool, it's a selection tool, it's the black arrow tool. And I'm going to select this text, and all I've done there is I've just clicked on the text. And you'll notice I'll get a text box up, um, and I've got all the text. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this, um, and then I'm going to justify it right so that um, we can put the numbers of the stats in, but it still keeps the same, the same uh, kerning and leading, etc. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold Alt on the keyboard, so that's um, ALT. I'm going to push that down now, and you can see that the cursor changes. They go it changes. As I click on the on the uh, the uh, text box, I'm going to move it across. Now I'm, all, I'm also going to, whilst I've got Alt hold down on the keyboard, I'm clicking on the mouse and moving, I'm also going to hold down shift. Now that's going to mean that I can only move left and right, up or down, or 45 degrees. Now that's really crucial if we want to make sure we keep everything in alignment. So once again I'm holding alt, I'm holding shift, and I'm also clicking and holding. Okay, so now I'm going to let go of them all. Okay, and I've moved essentially uh, moved it over, but whilst moving it, I've made a copy. So I'm now going to uh, turn this to justify right instead of left. Now you'll notice up here on this uh, toolbar that I've got different options for, for uh, justification of type. I've also got the same thing down here. There's a few more options down here. These are both exactly the same things. It's just that 
um, this is a more discrete um, version of like selected tools we may need. Anyway, okay, so I'm going to click on that one. And you'll notice it's kind of moved over, so I'm going to have to move it back. Now, what I ideally want to do is I'm going to move it against this guide. So I'm going to click, and now, if you remember, as I'm clicking, I don't want to hold Alt down, because if I hold Alt down, it will make a copy. But I definitely want to hold Shift down. Shift is there, it's going to make sure that it stays in the line. So I'm going to move that up right until it's up against that line. So there we go. Okay, that's probably gone a little bit too far, so I'm just going to use the arrow keys to go um, back one, so that will be uh, left on the arrow keys. And you'll notice it's just moving back. There you go. Okay, so I've got my text here. So what I need to do now is I actually need to change the text. Now I could do, what I could do is I could select it and just double click, and that will instantly change the tool I'm using from the arrow tool to the text tool. And you'll notice in the toolbar here, I'm now using the text tool. Now what I can do is I can click and drag over the text um, and select it all. I can then hit delete. And you'll notice that the cursor is flashing just around um, the top there, top right. So I'm now going to type in um, the stats for Wiley Dog. So 14, I'm going to hit return, and hit 6, return, 19, 10, 11. Oh, 11, 0. There you go. Okay, so we've got the statistics in. Now, uh, Wiley Dog is uh, a graphic design whiz dog, but uh, she doesn't do illustration or fashion futures, so she has no jewel on her skills. Okay, she's good at running though. But um, okay, so now I've got those in there. I can deselect that, and that's the number section done. Now I'm going to go and change the name section. So I could actually lock this layer now because I don't need to change it. So I'm going to lock that, and that means that I can't actually pick it up or change it. It just kind of keeps it safe. So I'm now going to select the text name layer, and I'm going to select that text box. Now instead of double clicking on it, I'm going to go to the text tool and just show you how to do it that way. So I'm going to select, and select the text tool, and now I can go over. Oh, and you see. This is what sometimes happens. Instead of selecting the text, it's made me a new text box. And this is what I don't want. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to, have to go to the black arrow, selection tool, hit the selection tool, and you'll notice that this has kind of highlighted this box. I'm just going to hit backspace on the keyboard. That's going to delete that. That's quite important we do that because we don't want extra text boxes on the design. So I'm going to do that again um, and try and uh, get it right this time. So I'm going to select the the type, set the type tool, and you'll notice that as I move the cursor down, it's quite hard to see, but it changes, um, and it's that point of where it changes, which is what I want to do. So now I can select the text, I can backspace to delete, and I can type in okay, so Wiley the dog. <clears throat> okay, so I'm pretty much finished here. Um, this is just a basic intro to in, uh, to Illustrator, just to get you familiar. So, just to kind of recap, we've got our tools in this toolbar, um, and we'll go into those in more detail in the future lessons. Um, these are palettes, these these kind of things here, and we can move those around. And we get to the palettes through here. So it's basically like every tool has a palette which is associated with it, so um, that will give you extra options. Um, okay, so it's fairly familiar to other uh, to Photoshop and InDesign, but uh, this is Illustrator, and you're going to be using this a lot. So we're just going to hit save. We're going to make sure that it's saving to Illustrator Wiley Dog. Save, and I'm going to close. I don't need to quit in uh, Illustrator at the moment. I'm just going to click back onto the background. And uh, now you're ready for your next part.